Hey guys, this is Brent. I wanted to do a quick summary of the letter I sent you. I know it's a lot of words, and so I just kind of wanted to read it through with you to help it make sense. Please still read it. Um, it has all the, the types of details that you're hopefully thinking of, um, but uh, I wanted to kind of talk through it to kind of make it make sense of it for you. So anyways, this email includes all the kind of main need to know information for you for this next week. Thank you so much for serving as one of our crew leaders. This honestly, I think is the most fun job of the whole week. You get to just spend time with the kids and have fun doing all the stuff that the station leaders have set up for you guys. So it's really fun. It's going to be a blast and the kids are going to love you by the end of the week. So the first thing I, I put down, there's just expectations. Step on church campus, ready to be excited to spend time with some kids. Um, we get to set the tone for these events, and we can really help by just being flexible. This is the first time we've done a vacation Bible school style event for a long time, and so I am positive that there's going to be things that we have missed. Just flow with it. Uh, a win for us looks like getting kids on campus, getting through the week with having everyone be safe, having lots of fun, and learning about Jesus. So just come, ready to have a blast with us. I think uh, you'll find that the week will go a lot better if we just kind of are posturing ourselves just to have fun. Uh, the second thing, a few terms so you know, you are a crew leader or a crew helper. Each crew is a grade-based group, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and then we combined, we combined our fifth and sixth graders into one group because they're usually smaller. And so each crew will have one main leader, and that person has a few extra responsibilities. Typically, that's going to be an adult. And then we have crew helpers. Uh, some more adults or young adults are crew helpers. We also have some junior high, high school students who will be traveling with the groups as helpers. So crew leader, you are the main one responsible for keeping everybody on time, making sure that you have your crew binder with everyone's information. You're kind of the on point person. Crew helpers, do whatever you can to keep the group under control, to let them have fun, participate. Um, so those are two roles there. In the same sense, we have station leaders and station helpers. These people are the hosts for each station that you'll be visiting. We have a security station, which is basically our check in and out table. There will be a gentleman posted up there all week long to help you with any security style issues. Uh, registration, kids getting checked in, checked out. If we have any questions, if we have any disciplinary issues or any injuries, our security guy is going to be there to help. I don't suspect that we're going to have many of these things come up, so one person being posted up throughout the week is pretty adequate. Uh, and then our stations. We have our music station, which is our song station. That's hosted in the North Auditorium. Our skydive diner, which is our snack station. That's in the multi-purpose room. We have the imagination creation station. This is our crafts. Uh, they're more hands-on crafts. They're a little less artsy and a little more activity-based. So it's going to be a, a real fun spin on like crafts. We have all-star games, which is our game station. And the wild blue adventure stories, which is our Bible story station. Those are the main stations. The other term you're going to hear us use a lot is opening and closing time. That's the 15 minutes on either end of the day, uh, 9 o'clock to 9.15, 11.45 to noon, where we kind of present the opening and then we wrap things up at the end of the day. Times and locations. We have a morning meeting. It's really, really, really important that we see you at 8.30 in the morning. We have 15 minutes there between 8.30 and 8.45 to uh, review the day before, preview what's going on, and make any adjustments. This is a crucial time for us to get together, make sure we have everything sorted out for the day, and just to pray, share some stories about stuff that went good. But because it's such a short window, we really need you to be here. Sylvia and her team in early childhood will be ready to receive your kids at 8.30. So you can drop them off, head right to our room, and uh, just come ready to rock right there. We'll be good to go. Um, registration begins at 8.45. We give 15 minutes for the kids to check in. 9 o'clock, we start our opening. The rotation st stations take place between 9.15 and 11.40. Um, each station, is, a, is there's a 30-minute gap, but the last five minutes of each station we provide for you to get from one station to the next. So it's really, really, really important for the last station of the day you end right on time so that we can start our closing at 11.45. We have a lot of things we're trying to cram into 15 minutes. It's very high energy. It's going to be very fun, and we want to make the best use of that time at the end of the day. Child pickup starts at noon. That's when we're officially done. We'll continue to sing songs and do some stuff from the front, but that is the main time where the parents are invited to come pick up their kids. It usually takes about 10, 15 minutes for the parents to show up, and there's going to be the occasional really late parent. If you got to go, um, communicate with one of the other crew leaders. Hey, I'm going. I still have a few kids here. Can you keep an eye on them? Um, but if you can stay until your kids are picked up, that would be ideal for us. Here are the duties of a crew leader. You still with me? They are as follows. 
Uh, be here at 8.30 in the morning for our weekly, our daily briefing. Be ready to welcome kids at 8.45. And that looks like this. They check in. They get a colored bracelet for the grade so you can clearly see which grade they belong in, which crew they belong in. And then you will welcome them. Hey, Johnny, I'm glad you're here. We're going to give you name tags. You're going to write out the kid's name, put on a sticker, stick it someplace where they can see it, not on their pants, not on their back, not on the inside of their coat. Put it somewhere where everybody can see it. Write yourself a name tag so they know who you are. And that is the main way that you're going to welcome the kids between 8.45 and 9. There will be lots of kids checking in late, all the way up through the opening time, 9 to 9.15. And uh, just receive those kids in the same way. Hey, hey come on, sit down quietly. We're, we're started, so here's your name tag. Write it out. That's going to help you learn their names and make them feel like they're really wanted in, uh, in the time today. After that, we uh, are going to rotate between our stations. I've attached a document to this email that has a, uh, the master rotation schedule for you and your group. If you're the crew leader, you're going to be carrying the crew binder, and that is an attendance sheet that is going to be checked off at the check-in table. We're going to hand it to you, and that's done so that you know you have a list of which kids should be in your group for that day. In the back is a copy of all the registration forms, so you can see there as a quick reference if uh, there's any food allergies, any special needs. Um, if a kid says, you know, if there's an emergency and uh, the ambulance shows up, you have the release form. Everything's right there, a copy of it in that binder for you. In case of emergency, you will be responsible for following the instructions posted by the exit of each room. Again, use the crew binder to do a head count, make sure all the kids are there. If there's a fire, earthquake, flood, whatever, uh, respond accordingly. If you're outside, you're good to go. Just stay outside. If you're inside, by the exits of the room will be some instructions. So take a peek at them. Uh, we don't need to do fire drills or things like that for this, but just be aware that if there is an emergency that you will be responsible for uh, escorting your group outside accordingly. Um, help the station leaders. You are the leaders of your crew, but as you walk them to the station, the station leader has a very specific thing prepared for you guys. Help that person uh, lead the kids. Don't Drop, you're not dropping them off from station to station. You're walking them to these stations. And then once they're there, your job's not done. You've got to interact. You are the ones who are engaging these kids. They will know you really well. They're not going to know the station leaders really well because they're going to spend the whole week with you. So you're still the leaders during that time. So don't disengage when you get there, especially for things like games. A lot of parents just want to sit back and let the kids run. No, you run. You get in there. You get messy and you have fun with everybody. So help the station leaders. And then at the end of the day, like I mentioned, uh, we need you guys to release uh, the kids to their guardians for that checkout time. There's a few policies we have. The first one is behavior policy. Uh, very simple rules. Uh, I, you, I could expand on this and make it bigger, but I try to make it very narrow because this captures most problems that we would see on an average day. One is keep your hands and feet to yourself. Two is keep your seat in your seat. And when we're walking around like this, that means basically be where you're supposed to be. So if it's craft time, you're sitting down doing your thing. If it's game time, you know, be where you're supposed to be. If the kid's running wild around a room, we can just remind them, hey, keep your seat in your seat. Even if they don't have a seat per se, they know what that means. And the last one is to listen when the leaders are talking. Talk during talk time because we have lots of that, but listen during teaching time. The second thing that's going to be important for you to be familiar with is our discipline policy. It's, again, very simple. The first one is just a verbal warning. Billy, uh, you need to keep your hands and feet to yourself. Next time you can't follow our simple rules, you're going to get a timeout. What you've done there is you've given them a warning and you've given them a preview that if they choose to disobey again, what is going to happen. So the second one is timeout. Uh, make the child, ask the child to sit somewhere away from the group, a five-minute timeout. For most kids, this is as far as you'll ever have to go. Uh, do it right away. Don't threaten a timeout. Do the timeout. And you'll say something like this, Billy, you've been warned and you continue to choose not to follow our rules. You need to take some time away from the group. Next time, we're going to have to walk you back to our security desk and call your parents. So you've told them why they're being punished with the timeout and you've told them what's going to happen next. And this is the third step. And that's we just call their parents. It's as simple as that. Um, we don't have enough time to discipline the kids over and over and over again so because that detracts from the group experience. So what we're going to do there is just take them to the parents. Um, so that means that you will walk them to the security desk and the security guy is going to evaluate what needs to happen next. 
uh, we will call the parents one way or the other, but whether or not we choose to ask the parents to pick up the kid or not uh, will be up to our security guy. Usually that phone call and some time spent at the security table will be enough to set them straight for the rest of the week. In fact, you'll find that it's enough to set your entire group straight for the next for the rest of the week. So I don't think you'll have to do that, but if you do, confidently follow steps one, two, three. Don't threaten it. Just do it the first time, and you'll find that you spend a lot less time worrying about discipline and a lot more time having fun with your kids. Uh, kids have to go to the bathroom. Uh, if you have time, a snack time is a great time, do a group bathroom stop. If you see a boys and girls bathroom, say, all right, everyone go to the bathroom if you have to. If not, hang out here. You got, you know, 30 seconds, go, 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 or whatever you do. If a kid has to go to the bathroom in the middle of the day, stop, have one crew leader walk that child to the bathroom. Do not go into the bathroom with the kid. Just let them go in, do their thing, and come out, and then walk them back. What we'd want to avoid is any situation where two kids are in the bathroom together because then they have a potty party and they stay in there all day long and make a mess. So we don't want that to happen. And we also don't want to have any leader in a room alone with a kid. That's just a general rule we never want to happen, especially in a bathroom. So wait outside. Make sure that kid gets walked to and from the bathroom. Don't just let them run off and come back. Um, the next one's important. It's reporting child abuse. We are required by state law to report any suspected uh, child abuse. So follow these steps if you suspect that a child is being abused. Um, and statistically, this is a reality that we face when we have this many kids together in one room. So the first thing is this. Do not attempt to get any information out of a child. It's not your job to investigate. It's not your job to ask questions. What you are doing is if you suspect something, uh, just report it and we take it from there. So the second thing is this. Listen and observe your kids. Uh, we really want our primary thing is to make sure that these kids are safe and taken care of. So if you suspect something, it's in the kid's best interest that we report it. Now, again, don't ask the kids questions about it, but follow the third step, which is just write something down and give it to me. I will deal with it. Um, myself and others in HR here at the church have been trained to deal with this sort of thing. Just write it down, and then we'll take it from there. Um, so, and we'll let you know if we need to do anything. But give details, give times, places, things, uh, describe what you see, because again, it's going to protect the child um, the better details you have. And hopefully it's, it's nothing, you know, but um, statistically speaking, this is a reality that we have to kind of face today. Um, no medication, don't give them any drugs, nothing little even. Uh, if there's an injury, uh, take them to the security desk. If it's serious, call my cell phone that's attached to this email. Um, if it's not serious, get a wet paper towel. Um, but if they're bleeding or something, grab a paper towel, walk them on. Um, these kids are going to have skin knees and they're going to fall down and be hurt. Kind of gauge it and see if they're really hurt or not. We don't want any kid walking around with a sprained ankle all day, but we don't want to have a bunch of babies uh, spending all this time at the security table getting extra TLC when they don't need it. My contact information and the, the front desk information is attached to this email. And the last thing is to please be at our 8.30 meeting. This is where we plug any gaps that we have during the day. So uh, email me. Call me if you have any questions. This should be a pretty broad overview. And uh, just be praying for a great week. I will see you Monday morning at 8.30.